What's up everyone, Markstrom here, and today we're going to look at spawn locations and pathings on the customs map on Escape from Tarkov. The main objective of this video is to provide you guys with default pathings that are safe for you to use and leave you in strong positions for any potential encounters. PvP is going to be the main focus, but following these paths will also allow you to more easily accomplish your tasks as well. And finally, I'm going to throw in some general pathing theory and a few interesting peaks and angles that you guys can use to get some extra kills. Here is a nice top-down map of customs that I'll use throughout the video to provide you guys with a basic layout. And I'll also be sure to throw it down in the description for you to reference. The original 3D render was provided by Maxon, so a massive thank you to him. All the map spawn points are marked with green arrows. These spawn points may change slightly as the game develops, but the overall concepts and the pathings will remain the same. There is a lot of specific information that's about to be covered, so I'll also make sure to timestamp each of them in the description so you can easily reference the spawns on the fly. Every customs raid that you load into as a PMC, you will randomly start on either the west or the east side of the map, and you'll have to travel to the opposite side to extract. Let's break all these spawns down into three different categories. First, you have the front spawns, which are the most advantageous. These spawns allow you to push freely towards the middle of the map and break away from the pack. This prevents unnecessary deaths due to the high density of players spawning in behind you. The front spawns also allow you to catch players off guard who are traversing the map from the opposite direction. Second, you have the middle spawns. These are the most dangerous since you are sandwiched between everyone spawning near you. The main objective here is to quickly maneuver to the closest strong position and wait out the initial burst of activity. Finally, you have the back spawns. Back spawns allow you the security of knowing that you only have enemies on one or two directions. However, you're forced to scout and hold lanes to ensure your own safety before being able to move out yourself. Looking at the west side of the map first, there are four front spawns, which include Train to Port, North Customs Complex, Train Yard, and Train to Tarkov. When you spawn at these points, you have two options, particularly the Train to Tarkov and Train to Port locations. More advanced, confident players looking for PvP here will attempt to capitalize on their situation and try to pin the rest of the PMCs into their spawn, forcing them to fight their way out. This, however, can get really hectic and result in what I like to call multi-party gunfights, which can have a low percentage survivability. To begin with a more stable footing, I recommend pushing east immediately across the river and then maneuvering to the forest west of the dorms as the main objective. To get here, I tend to avoid the main bridge because its pathing is slightly out of the way based on the spawn points, and it also usually has a small pocket of scavs at the far east end of it. Avoiding scav pockets is key. The idea isn't necessarily that you're afraid to fight them, but rather that they can be utilized as a major asset. By leaving them alive, you end up having a built-in alarm system for other PMCs who choose to path near them. This allows you the luxury of only having to visually pay mind to certain areas while just keeping your ears attentive to the locations that are littered with scavs. For this reason specifically, sniper scavs are particularly useful. They have the ability to scout large sections of the map, and their gunshots are usually very distinct. As a result, once we cross the river, we can choose to avoid the construction site altogether and avoid fighting the sniper who overlooks it. All we have to do is simply path through the checkpoint gates and quickly cross the road northward. Once we're posted up in the West Forest, we know that the sniper shots mean that a PMC has entered the west side of the construction or is wrapping the alley by Warehouse 17, and then we can choose to engage accordingly if we'd like. The West Forest itself is particularly a nice spot to just take in the surrounding noises and assess the map because it's so visually dense with foliage and it has a really nice plateau with ridges that can provide plenty of cover. Additionally, every PMC spawning on your side of the map will have to run past you to get to the dorms, which as we know is a very high traffic area due to the high-end loot that is there. All it takes is a little bit of patience and some very keen ears to net some very early kills here. Let's take a look at the middle spawns on the west end here. There are four total, being storage, ditch, customs office, and parking. 
And as we mentioned, they are particularly dangerous because of the enemies spawning in on all sides of you. There will be situations here that call for significantly slower gameplay right off the bat. Using your ears to be able to build this cognitive map of players around you is super key. And even more so uh, important is the ability to know when to pounce on an active fight that's already occurring. Being able to successfully wipe two spawns as a third party will drastically increase your success rate in surviving a middle spawn. Starting with storage, you are unfortunately left with very few options. The way that I prefer to play this is to position myself in a lane that offers really good sight lines, but also allows me some quick cover as I need it. Predetermining how to break line of sight from your enemies is incredibly key to surviving an encounter that isn't going your way. Uh, all you have to do is listen carefully to determine the surface of any footsteps heard in this area, uh, like grass versus concrete versus metal, uh, which will end up making a huge difference in what to prepare for. Keep in mind that metal sounding footsteps here means that a PMC is traveling on the rooftops of the garages, so definitely elevate your attention. Spawning inside of the customs office building is also a dangerous start. Choosing to break out means having to traverse the open complex, uh, which is probably only going to be met with gunfire from a bunch of different angles. Uh, so choosing to stay inside of the office kind of also means choosing a very likely gunfight, as most of the time the building ends up getting cleared and looted. But what I can provide is a prime aggressive location with a few advantages to help you win this encounter. The fallen shelving provides a great ramp up to a set of windows that allows you to scout and peek the ditch and the garage area. Additionally, with the overwhelming number of dark corners for incoming PMCs to clear out, as long as you remain still and quiet up there, you can often net a very easy kill on any player trying to breach one of the two main entrances. Next, we have the ditch spawn, which forces you to make a very quick judgment call. The main lanes have to be avoided as they are very quickly scouted. So you're really only left with two options, the quick push into the storage area or the quick push into the customs office. For whichever one that you choose, the strategies that we just went over will both apply. Because of the way that the spawn system works, it's incredibly rare that either of these spaces will already be occupied, but definitely still proceed with caution. I know a lot of these middle spawns sound brutal, but attempting to try and break out towards the center of the map is an even riskier roll of the dice. However, there is one spawn with a breakout that I believe to be safe and fast enough to attempt doing this, and that is the parking spawn. The initial cover that you're given in the trailer park leaves a lot to be desired. Being able to use the trailer though, to jump over the wall into the ditch, and then push the south land bridge is definitely an option worth considering. Again, it's really rare to see adjacent spawns be occupied, but definitely be wary for PMCs that could potentially spawn at Train to Tarkov. Finally, we have the two west end back spawns, Crossroads and Trailer Park. With these, patience is everything. Since you're at the edge of the map, both of these spawns provide the advantage of knowing that you are safe from two directions. Your best bet for leaving the spawn area here alive is to actively hold your lanes, since both have really nice clear road views. The odds of player traveling these roads is very high as they head out eastward, which gives you a really prime opportunity for clean kills. Be really patient here, prioritize your shot placement, and always consider the direction of travel. Many will have their back turned to you, so if the shot isn't handed to you, don't shoot just for the sake of shooting. Drawing any additional attention to yourself in this area means that every PMC has the ability to collapse on you, leaving nowhere to retreat since you're just stuck in this corner. So if you're going to pull that trigger, make sure you're getting a kill. All right, with the west end being covered, let's switch focus over to the east side. There are two main front spawns that give you different distinct advantages, in addition to being able to push away from the rest of the PMCs that are spawning in your area. The northern power line spawn is particularly powerful because it provides the fastest route to the dorms. There is a huge advantage here to being able to be the first to post up in a high traffic area. This provides not only positional advantage, but it also allows you to be quiet while assessing the push of an enemy. With this in mind, you can easily catch them off guard and gain a quick kill and early map control. 
If you're feeling even more aggressive, you can push beyond the dorms and into the west forest itself and then hold further west waiting on the west side of the map to arrive. Very few players trotting through this area are going to expect your company that early, which you can definitely take advantage of. The storage building front spawn allows for a really cool push, which leaves you with a ton of strong cover and an element of surprise. Immediately leaving the spawn, push through the heavily bushed back alley, cutting off visibility to the shipping yard. This will give you a safe lane of travel. Jumping onto the far left vehicle allows you to hop up onto the porta potty. To hit this jump with consistency with base strength, avoid using sprint and focus on landing on its far east ledge and then jump the wall. Continue westward and bank south into the shipping container. Be sure to avoid the barbed wire here and avoid any unnecessary damage to your legs. This construction yard not only allows you to advance with tons of cover, but an early push into here is sure to catch any enemies entering the yard off guard. Make sure that you avoid fighting the sniper scav and let him do the dirty work of spotting any enemies for you. When he engages them, then use this opportunity to push up into a position with an angle to take them out. The beautiful thing about utilizing these front spawns to make really aggressive pushes is that if it ever leaves your meds or your armor depleted, an added advantage is that you are super close to either the RUAF roadblock or the smuggler's bow extracts. Being here first means way more successful raids and more accumulation of other players' loot. Looking at the middle spawns on the northeast side of the map, there's the military base checkpoint and the passage between rocks. Neither of these spawns are really fantastic options, as to be expected from these sandwiched spawns. Your best course of action here is to find the closest rock and foliage formation that removes the largest angle of visibility. Ideally, you will only be visible from an angle that is similar in degrees to your own line of sight. This allows you to properly defend yourself. Limiting your own sound and movement here is also key. As soon as you're able to get an opening pick, this will provide a lot more room for you to be able to break out of this area, and it will allow you to ideally move westward toward more cover. Be sure to stick to the low ground here and the hard cover as much as possible. Lingering around basically on top of the hills is a surefire way to get you picked off. The middle spawns on the south side actually have some really surprisingly solid options for plays to be made. Uh, specifically, the container building spawn offers one of my personal favorite peaks that has resulted in countless kills. Pushing out the east side of the building and heading south, you'll come directly in contact with the ZB1012 extract bunker. You can climb on top of the slope side and actually crouch or prone on top, which gives you vision eastward over the fence. This sightline will very frequently offer you an early pick from an unsuspecting angle. If, for some reason, you miss your shot or you encounter multiple enemies, you have a really great advantage to be able to easily disengage by simply just falling off the bunker. This will help you break the line of sight and reset the fight. There are three other middle spawns on the southeast side of customs, including the elevated platform, the smokestack, and the repair shop. The location of all of these actually triangulate around what I would consider to be an ideal stronghold that I call the pit. Moving here is the prime objective for each of these spawns. There are numerous lanes of hardcover in the middle of the pit keeping you concealed, which are even further contained inside of elevated ramps of land. Any player who ends up pushing these ramps is going to be at a huge disadvantage gunplay-wise. Basically, their head is going to show before they can even return fire. This, stacked with the pit player being able to hear them coming, should definitely provide some free kills. I'd also like to note that spawning in the repair shop comes with another one of my personal favorite peaks. Climbing the handguard of the stairs in the southwest corner of the shop actually allows you tons of vision. You can actually use your hatchet to bash out the window for a clearer view without having to shoot your gun and give your position away. This will allow you to better see the hill above the checkpoint and the main gas station. If you end up using the highest landing, you will also give yourself vision of the pit and the surrounding area if you find outside to be quickly occupied. Finally, there are two main backspawns on the east side of customs, the first being just north of the scav checkpoint. As you could probably assume via the spawn theory I've already shared, the objective here is to hold lanes. With the edges of the map mostly protecting your back, you can focus on the hole in the fence to your south. Many players path this way who spawn on the boiler side 
if they want to move through the woods to the north because this allows them to circumvent the scavs at the checkpoint and the gas station. And last but not least, we have the silo spawn. I find the safest, most effective pathing here to patiently work the outside edges of the map. Travel along the east road to the factory far corner and then work your way west along the elevated land within the train tracks. Sticking to the wall here allows you the option of quickly breaking line of sight with enemies on the lower elevation by going prone. If they push, they will again be forced to show their head hitbox before having the option to return fire, therefore netting another easy kill. Ultimately, as the raid progresses, the player numbers thin out, providing more real estate for safe journey and a higher survival probability for you. Don't be afraid to be patient, using the sounds of the map to create your cognitive map for perceived potential threats and be calculated with your aggression. Some advantages may seem small, but make all the difference in Tarkov and need to be capitalized on. Hopefully this spawn guide equips you with a strong framework of the map and gives you the confidence to make the most of your raids and enjoy more PVP success. I plan on making one of these guides for each map, so be sure to let me know what map you'd like to see down below in the comments. If there's anything that you'd like to see me do differently in the next one, Hit me with that as well, and also be sure to subscribe for more content like this. If you guys want to be notified when my videos go live, click the bell next to the subscription button and join the notification squad. Also, be sure to tune in to the live stream every single day of the week, starting at 7 a.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash Markstrom. Thanks for watching, guys.